Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for the grace and thank you for your love. Thank you for this day. And uh, as we share into your word, may thy presence continually guide us and thy Holy Spirit make impressions on our heart of the truth and give us strength to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, yesterday, we were looking at uh, the issue of uh, where is uh, the woman. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, if you didn't uh, watch uh, the yesterday session where I was dealing with uh, where is the woman, and there's a reason where I started with the woman, and then uh, I come to uh, where is uh, where is the woman then, uh, the man. And so I want to deal with uh, where is the man. I realized yesterday that uh, after presentation, people were asking, uh, can we find such a, a, a woman or a lady in Adventism? And uh, I believe that uh, the, the word of God is true and uh, he, he can't give out uh, qualities of uh, a woman you need in marriage that uh, he cannot provide. If the Lord says that this is the kind of a woman, this is the kind of a wife you ought to have, then uh, God is so faithful that uh, he will uh, just do what he has said he will do and provide for that person in your life which uh, will be able to help you uh, face these life's challenges, help you face uh, uh, the life with uh, positivity. The reason why I say that um, the Lord will uh, be able to provide is because marriage is um, uh, a revelation of uh, Christ and his church. And so if Christ can have a church which he can present before his father in uh, a spotless uh, a way, then uh, a man is able to find a wife who can compliment him in his daily life as a helpmate. And for sure, as we know that um, Christ has a church, so man will have a wife because family actually reveals unto us about this issue. And so uh, we left yesterday in the book of Ephesians chapter five, where we were looking at these uh, uh, our relationships that uh, we are given and courtship and marriage that uh, we are in and we are cutting across whether you are in a relationship whether you are in courtship or whether you are, you are in marriage these principles that actually are carried into marriage should be practiced in courtship and if these principles can be achieved in courtship then you are sure that your marriage will work out just the way uh, uh, I, I can say this that um, Christ has been in uh, courtship uh, with, uh, uh, with the bride, that is the church. And uh, it is only what will work in courtship that will be able to make up to heaven and make up the church of God. But if in this courtship, Christ cannot have a people whom he cannot present before the Father, then he cannot enter into the marriage and then say that um, he will try to better things. Uh, and we should view marriage and courtship as um, something more higher than we have ever thought about and more noble and more religious. If there is anything that should be uh, viewed as more religious, then it is marriage. And so if Christ cannot have members who can be able to overcome sin, members who can be able to walk in sanctity and in purity, in the courtship in this preparation time, then he cannot carry those members into heaven to make up the bride, to make up the wife of, uh, of the bridegroom. And so the way Christ is conducting his courtship is the way that we should conduct our courtship. If these relationships will not work, don't think that now you can carry somebody into marriage and expect it just to be good. Christ will never take sinners to heaven and you shouldn't be uh, tying knots with uh, somebody who actually uh, we have, have failed in relationship and courtship. That you are making a dangerous step when you are doing that and you shouldn't be doing that. And so uh, we look at uh, 
Where is the woman? Where is this woman that is the church? The woman was uh, likened unto a church and uh, this is a pure church that is to be presented to Christ. And so in a courtship and in relationship situation, we should be considering all these principles that we laid yesterday, where is the woman, and be able uh, uh, to conduct a relationship and courtship in such a, a principles. And then we can have a marriage that is lasting. I, I'll, I'll be looking at more of this, where is the woman and where is the man, when I'm dealing with the ties that binds. When you have tied the knots, brothers and sisters, there's no going back. People say that, um, uh, uh, once you are married, uh, you can just uh, uh, divorce or separate with your spouse. But uh, they don't read all those statements in context of what uh, the Bible is saying. And uh, many people have made an issue about uh, abusive relationships and abusive marriages and then uh, 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 adultery in, in marriages. But uh, uh, before you reach that decision of divorce and all these things, because we find that uh, uh, people are hurrying, instead of uh, making up in marriages, they, they, they want to run to separation and divorce, and uh, that is not uh, what God is calling unto us. I, I'll be looking at that with, uh, in the session that uh, ties that binds. And so don't actually bring yourself in a place where you make vows and tomorrow you are dissatisfied with the vows that you made, you want to annul them. God is not uh, embraced with the, what we call foolishness in, in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. He says that uh, be not rash to make a vow because he is not interested in foolishness. And so many people will like to make vows very hastily. And then after two weeks, after three weeks, they, they are saying that now I can not make it in this marriage, I want to break up. Where is the man is uh, the title of the presentation. Uh, uh, I want to think, uh, I want you to think as a man. When you marry, what you're doing is uh, you're committing yourself to put somebody under your care. And uh, as I said that this is not only dealing with the uh, uh, the people who are married, but also those who are in courtship uh, and relationships, you, you don't want to have a man who cannot protect you. And uh, I'm not talking about financial stability because people think that uh, to be protected means uh, financial stability. That is not my burden because they are poor people in this world. Will not they marry because they are poor? They, uh, and, and the Lord ordained, so when you read the book of Deuteronomy, he says that the poor shall not cease yes. to be amongst you. So when we talk about security, we are not talking about somebody who can provide everything you need, somebody who can pay a good dowry. In fact, people have used dowry as a, a form of uh, business and uh, manipulation, and they have used it as a means of buying and selling. There, there is a lot that goes on in these issues of uh, dowry, and uh, it's not bad to appreciate the parents of uh, the lady whom you want to marry. But uh, if things could be done the way the Lord ordained that they should happen, then uh, we shall see greater changes that uh, uh, God will bless. Because God had ordained that uh, when a man was to marry, he had to pay the bride price. And uh, we can look at the bride price also in the Bible. But uh, this bride price was a protection for this lady in that uh, uh, the, the, the parents will uh, be able to know that uh, the man who is taking upon uh, our daughter is able to provide for her, is able to uh, uh, do everything that should be, a man should do in marriage. And so after he had paid the dowry and they had what we call the espousal period, espousal period in the Jewish economy was like 12 months, where actually you go to the uh, to the parents of the lady and then you pay the bride price and then there's the grace period of uh, gauging each other if you can still live together. Uh, and so it was like 12 months, some others uh, six months and so on. And then after that espousal period ends, then uh, the parents could take the dowry that you had given unto them and return to you and give uh, in turn uh, the lady to you. And so 
This was to help the man start up a family, not in poverty, but on a, a, a platform that uh, uh, will maintain happiness and jovialness in the family. But uh, marriage and uh, bridal price have uh, been abused, and we don't know if this generation can uh, be able to do the things the way the Lord will want them to do. But uh, alas, we are living in a sinful world, so we can just pay the bride price. I don't have a problem with paying the bride price and then it's not given back to me. Uh, I already did that and so I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with those who are planning to pay the bride price and it will not be returned unto them. Do your dutiful duty and then the Lord will be with you. And so a lady will want to have a somebody who has, uh, uh, who can give them protection. A person who knows that uh, uh, this daughter of somebody is coming under my care. And so I should be there for her because she is being taken from a foreign land to come into a foreign land that is into my family. And now she is under my umbrella. If you can't, a lady, if you can't find a man who can do that in your relationship, in your courtship, then you have no business with such a, a man who doesn't care that now you are under him and he has to provide for you. He has to make sure you are okay. He has to make sure that you are safe wherever you are. Uh, I'm not talking about um, spending the whole day knowing where your lady is and what she's doing and all that stuff, but uh, caring, the care that should be exercised uh, in marriage should be practiced in courtship. And you find that uh, men are so careless that uh, they think that they can just run about their relationship and when they come into marriage, then they'll be able to care for their wives. If you didn't care about your lady when you are in relationship and in your courtship, don't think that you can practice that into, uh, into marriage. Because we saw yesterday that courtship is con married, a courtship continues in marriage. And so what you have been doing in courtship, you will have to continue it in marriage. There are privileges in marriage that will not be in courtship like uh, uh, sexual intercourse, they are not allowed in uh, courtship, but uh, they'll be added into marriage. But there are some things, if you can't be able to practice them in uh, courtship, then uh, you know that you can practice them on uh, in marriage. If a man is so busy for the girlfriend, the person he's wishing to marry or contemplating to marry, how will you have time with this woman uh, when you are married, you will be just what you are in courtship. And so we are warning ladies, if you have a man who is contemplating to marry you, he doesn't care about you, he doesn't know if you, uh, how you have slept and all that stuff, then be sure that this man will neglect you even in marriage and uh, you should start reconsidering yourself how these things are big. And so uh, somebody will ask, uh, uh, where are these all these things uh, uh, found? Where are those things found? Uh, I want us to go to First Corinthians chapter eleven, and we read it yesterday. And I like to start uh, as we look at these uh, principles. Uh, I'm looking at uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter eleven. This is what uh, the Bible says. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the old numbers as I deliver them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Now that is profound that uh, the head of every man is Christ. When we talk about headship, it doesn't mean just... Uh, 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 somebody's under you and ruling over you and uh, uh, overbearing you in, in their lives. But uh, uh, if you are the head of something, then it means, let us talk about people being the heads of a company, people being heads of an institution. They care about those companies. They care about the prosperity of those institutions and they make sure that things are running well. And so this is the ideal man that we are talking about. Where is the man? Can we have a man who understands he is ahead of what he's entering into, uh, into. In your relationship, do you care? Do you want to see the prosperity of this relationship or you are looking into faults and instead of mending them, 
you are ready to break away from it. And if you can't endure your relationship and the challenges that comes with it, don't tell me that you can endure with the uh, uh, marriage life. And so we need heads, people who care. Like uh, when you look at a company uh, head, if the company is headed in a wrong way, if uh, an institution is headed in a wrong way or it is having some loopholes, the head of that institution doesn't say, let us break up this institution and try to uh, come up with another institution. They will look into every possible way of restructuring or uh, getting back this institution in line. That is the kind of things we need. That is the kind of relationships we need, men realizing that they are just being called to meet the challenges they have in relationship and in marriages uh, and in courtship so that they can be able to handle it in marriage. And if you are this person, if you are this man who is running from this relationship to this relationship because of these little, little things that uh, you can pray and the Lord makes them happen, then know that when you come into marriage, you will be a person who is easily uh, going to break up your own marriage instead of making up. And so we need uh, uh, men who can care about their relationship. And so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses uh, 9. Let us look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verses 9. 1 Corinthians 3, from verse 9. And uh, talking about uh, building everything according to the principles of, uh, of, uh, of the Bible, because we are looking at where is the man who can be able to come up with a relationship and a marriage that works. For we are laborers with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Uh, according to the grace of God, which is given unto us as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stable, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what uh, sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built there upon, he shall receive a reward. If any man works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And so Christ has given us the foundation of how marriages and relationships and courtship should be conducted. And we cannot uh, satisfy the fancy by having our own principles of what is relationship, what is courtship and own marriage. And if you build on your own principle, then when the fire comes and test the structure that you are uh, building, uh, you will suffer loss. And maybe you alone will be able to be saved, but you will find that all you have built upon has perished. We looked at the issue, where is the woman and the uh, uh, compared the woman as a church. And we are talking about the woman being the church or the sanctuary. And the sanctuary itself was uh, overlaid on top with the Hanebaja skin. And then uh, inside was overlaid with gold, meaning that the woman has to endure what she's going through. And because she's a church, be able to bring out uh, a circumstances that can bring about salvation to her relationship, courtship, and marriage. And then we found that in this church, there was this man, the high priest, who entered into the most holy place to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. He was the only one to know the secrets of the most holy place. He was the only one to guide this church or this sanctuary to loving the Lord more and uh, to showing the people the holiness of uh, this sanctuary. Let us take the man Moses for a moment. The man Moses, he went into the presence of the Lord. And when he came from the presence of the Lord, his face was shining, his face was glowing. We ask ourselves as men who are entering into marriage and would like to enjoin ourselves to a woman, can we, are you that man who can spend time with God and bring into your relationship the glory of God? 
be able to show that this woman that I'm really getting into a courtship marriage with a person who understands his God and can bring heaven down here on earth because the family ought to be a miniature of what heaven is. If you are in a relationship uh, that uh, a man is not concerned with your spirituality as women, he's not uh, uh, concerned with coming into that most holy place, entering into these secrets uh, that uh, a, a lady has for him and then presenting them before the Lord, if there is any weakness, the Lord may strengthen her then you know that you are in a relationship where you will have uh, problems in your life. You must uh, uh, see this man, and you are not talking about pretenders and hypocrites. You must have this man whose his goal is uh, to uplift Christ in your life. Because the work of the high priest it was to uh, 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 make sure that the glory of the Lord was uh, in, the, in the sanctuary. And how did he... Uh, how could he be able to do that? He had to offer sacrifices which were acceptable before the Lord. And so the man in your life, as ladies, the man in your life should be a man who would want to see the glory of God being exemplified in your relationship, the, the glory of God being uh, uplifted in your life. But if the person you are in in relationship is frivolous, he is not interested in your spirituality. He is not interested about where your heart is in the heavenly books. Then know that you are in a wrong relationship. Marriage should be conducted and courtship in a very solemn way. Suppose that um, you are in a marriage where this man uh, doesn't meet all these qualities. You have already made the vows. I'll be dealing with uh, uh, how to live with an uh, 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 unconverted husband and how to deal with an unconverted wife. And we shall see how you can do that. But if you are in a relationship, don't fall for just men who are interested in worldly things, how you may prosper in this world, and then that is where life ends. Marriage is an institution. When you enter into it, you are purposing to present all your household before God in heaven. And so what you will practice in courtship is what will happen in your marriage. If the man that you are having is not interested to present you before the Lord and your name to remain in the book of life, know that you are entering into marriage that uh, will be detrimental and uh, 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 will not help you. Uh, Genesis chapter 25, verses 21, talking about this man, we are looking at where is this man that can have a relationship that will lead to marriage, that will lead to a family getting to heaven. The book of uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 25 verses 21. And this is so great. And I, I, I love these scriptures because they help us realize some things in marriage that uh, we have never realized. 21 says, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca, his wife conceived. Now, this is profound. We, we found out uh, in the previous instances that uh, when Isaac married Rebecca, he was comforted. Go back to, let us just go back to 24 and lay some foundation. Uh, Genesis 24 from verse 62 to 67. Let us read this before we go to 25. <coughs> it says, and Isaac came from the way of uh, the well of La Hairoi, for the, he dwelt in the south uh, country. Sorry for that. And Isaac came from the way of, well, of the well of La Airoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And so Isaac here is meditating about the woman that Eliezer has gone to bring 
and Isaac is thinking about the mother who has just passed away and he's thinking, how will life be without my mother? How will life be with this woman I have never even met in life, I have never quoted and I have never practiced to love this wife. And he's meditating about all these things. And uh, when he looks up, he sees Carmen's coming, verse 64. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the Carmen. You see, Rebecca, for the first time she, she sees Isaac, she is practicing humility. This is a person she is meeting for the first time, but Rebecca is practicing humility that many, even after so many years in courtship and marriage, will never practice. But here is a lady. At the first sight of the man who will be the husband, she practices this humility. Verse 65, <clears throat> for she had said unto the servant, what is this man, uh, what is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore, she took a veil and covered herself. The next thing we find out about Rebecca is the reverence he had, she had for uh, this man, Isaac. Remember, Rebecca had never seen uh, Isaac, but she shows two things that takes many people who have been in relationship and marriage so many years to be able to practice. And so here we are told that uh, uh, she, so, she shows humility and then she shows reverence. Remember, Isaac has, never, has not done anything good to Rebecca, but she is ready to show her all to the, uh, to the husband to be. And so this is something that ladies, you should be thinking about. You, you always expect that uh, you are, men will do something good so that you may show humility and reverence. But this is not the way Rebecca conducted her relationship and her marriage. Verse uh, 6, six. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother's Sarah, Sarah's tent and took Rebecca and she became his wife. And he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And so you find that uh, actually, um, Isaac find comfort in Rebecca. Although they, had, they hadn't had a courtship and a relationship, but um, as days continued, the things that could have been practiced in courtship were seen being practiced in marriage. And this comforted Rebecca so much. And then it helped uh, Isaac to continue loving her even more because she was a comfort to uh, his life. And so ladies, are you a comfort to the man who wants to marry you? Are you a comfort to your husbands, those who are married? And then now we come to the verse that I was talking about, uh, chapter 25, verses 21. Uh, after these people got into marriage, and we are looking at where is the man? Genesis chapter 25, verses 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. Now, that is interesting that uh, the Bible records that uh, Rebecca was barren. This is, uh, and this may apply more so to the people who are in marriage already, that uh, your wife is barren as a husband because you are looking at where is uh, the man. You, you may be in a marriage, those who have entered into marriage and uh, maybe they didn't conduct their courtship so well and so carefully. You may be in a marriage and uh, you are in a barren marriage, even as Rebecca was barren. And uh, the best thing to do is not uh, to try to walk out of the marriage. The best thing is not to divorce. The best thing is not to separate. We are told that uh, uh, Rebecca was barren and uh, Isaac entreated of the Lord and then she conceived. Husbands, do you have that power to be able to pray and the things that are barren in your marriage, actually the Lord will hear them and be able to change your wives. And those who are in their relationship and then you, you have uh, decided to give your all and you have decided to be able to dwell with this lady because I don't believe and Brothers and sisters, be careful the things that you, you are doing. As I said yesterday, when God created uh, Adam and Eve, 
he didn't create man to go looking for this woman and looking for this woman and then be in a thousand relationships before he settles on this one relationship. No, this is not the way of the Lord. This is the way of the devil. The Lord has made it that you pray about the lady. And if you follow the steps that our brother was talking about, and he will continue talking about in steps to marriage, you will find out that if you are contemplating marriage, you should go down on your knees. Don't enter into courtship and then start praying. Go down on your knees and then the Lord will give you the lady to marry so that you may not start testing this relationship and this relationship. And so after God has given you the lady that you should be able to marry, know that actually there are some things that can happen in courtship which uh, will try to tell you that you are not supposed to get married to this uh, lady. And uh, yet it is the lady that uh, the Lord has provided and he is testing you how you can behave with this lady in relationship and in courtship so that you may be able to handle the family issues. And uh, 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 I think uh, when you look at uh, Jesus Christ, he, he hasn't chosen a perfect uh, uh, bride per se, but uh, he has chosen a fallen people so that they may be a wife and present them to the father by doing everything he can do so as they may be perfected. Now you are in a courtship or in a relationship. The Lord is testing you that if you can't manage this barren relationship, if you can't deal with these small, small things that happen in courtship, how will you be able to deal with the marriage where some barrenness can come as even it was with uh, Isaac and Rebecca? How will you deal with your wife who is barren? I'm not talking about the womb being closed, but you are seeing some character in this lady that cannot be able, that are not pleasing unto you. And uh, somebody will ask, uh, Sammy, do you, was your lady perfect and is your wife perfect? No, uh, I, I wouldn't cheat you that. And uh, am I the perfect man for her? As the Lord has brought us together, he will need that perfection. And we should be working on every step to perfection. And so my work as a man is to make sure that I'm leading this uh, lady higher and higher and not lower and law. And so she may be barren in some way. She may not be uh, having those good characteristics that I need. Maybe I had overlooked them in relationship, but now I have entered into marriage with her. I have to make sure that I use her strength to be able to uh, make uh, good out of it. And uh, there are times maybe we have had uh, uh, bad times in our marriages and it all narrows down to how will you deal with this? Will you deal with it as Isaac dealt with it? She didn't start telling Rebecca, I have paid a great bride price for uh, marrying you. I have done you favors by marrying you. And now I need a child and then you are barren. I think the best thing I can do is to marry another wife. I think the best way to find happiness is to go out and cheat or be uh, socialized with other women. No, this is not the step that Rebecca takes. And these are not the steps we should be taking in our courtship and in our marriages. Can we be able to endure the courtship? And if we can be able to do that, then we are assured that we can be able to endure our marriage. And so you find that many people are giving up in marriages. It is because they didn't face challenges in their courtship, or if they faced them, they brushed them aside thinking that things will be good. and. Uh, Many people who have left their courtship, uh, the courtship and relationship, it's because they cannot endure and the Lord could not see it fit for them to get married. So are you that man like Isaac who can be able to pray for the wife and then she be fruitful? We find that after Isaac enduring, he was able to have two children, that is uh, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel, the overcomers. And so you must be a man who can be able to lead your woman to overcome what she's going through. Uh, the book of, uh, uh, the book of uh, uh, Hosea, when you look at it, and the book of uh, Ezekiel. And uh, now I'm not encouraging people to go and take uh, harlots to be their wives. When you look at the book of Hosea, I'm talking about these people who have entered into courtship and uh, they, are, they have introduced their ladies to their parents and those who have entered into the marriages. When you relate with the book of Hosea, 
in the book of Ezekiel chapter 16. In Hosea, Hosea has this adulterous wife. But then the Lord, and it was a symbol, by the way, of how Christ deals with his church. And he's told, go take back your, your wife and be able to love her again. And so not all adulterers will not always lead to divorce. This is where people make mistakes. Mm. You find your wife is an adultery, and the, the, the first thing that comes on your list, and you are so good in quoting, uh, quoting Matthew chapter 5, but there's a lot that is going in Matthew chapter 5 uh, about um, that lady. Uh, the, 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 why the Lord says that uh, if uh, the only uh, reason for divorce is, uh, is adultery. But uh, look at Hosea. If you get your woman doing adultery, what is the best thing to do? The Lord tells Hosea, go love your wife again. I think this is something that is so hard and it is so hard because actually we don't love each other. If we love each other and we are talking about a man, if you are, you are the man and you go caught your wife in adultery or you had something of such a kind that uh, uh, she is a woman who loves to uh, be in the presence of men and all that stuff, the Lord is telling you go love that person again. Because love is the only thing that can melt down the hearts of those people who are, have hard hearts. And so you are in this marriage and it is not working. Love your wife before you try to divorce because divorce is not a solution. You will, you will divorce this one and tomorrow you'll divorce that one and tomorrow you'll divorce that one. If you are in a, a relationship and, uh, and this is so great and uh, think about uh, Joseph and Mary. A spouse to be married, and then uh, uh, the Joseph finds that uh, Mary is pregnant of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we are so uh, uh, rush to make uh, decisions while we don't think about everything. And I'm not saying that if you are, you are in a relationship and uh, a woman is practicing fornication and adultery, you should go ahead and marry this lady. But even if it is separation, Try to think how you will leave this lady, not with embarrassment, because Joseph says that uh, I leave her secretly. I'll not expose her, is it? Yeah, and if you are going to come out of this relationship because you have found your girlfriend whom you are quoting in adultery, leave it in a way that is redemptive. We are looking for where is the man. Leave, if you are going to leave, leave with a, 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 a way that uh, will help this woman uh, trace back her steps and even think about Christ more than she will think about men who are there to embarrass her. And so this is the way that we should be dealing with our courtship and marriage. We should not be ready to divorce. We shouldn't be ready just to separate and cause people shame, but we should be ready to cover their mistake. And so Christ says something in Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. And some things are for those in marriage, some things are for those who are in coaching. Isaiah chapter 50. Let us look at this. We are looking at where is the man. And uh, I'm talking about things which are practical because uh, I'm speaking about the things that uh, has happened to my life in the past and in the present. And so uh, in my own life, and in the life of the people I deal with, how do you deal with them? And so I'm trying, I'm telling you things that have been tried and they are working. Thus said the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? Where whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourself and for your transgression is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I come, was there no man when I called, it was there none to answer. Is my hand shortened all at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and thy thirst. So Christ is asking the bill of divorcement that he has given to his church who has been unfaithful. There is no bill of divorcement. And my point was that we should not be rushing into divorcement just because somebody has done this and that. We should be able to sit down and uh, be able to try to rectify things, most of those of us who are in marriage. 
again, um, when you look at Christ as the man and the church as a bride, uh, Christ doesn't spew out the church until the close of probation. Now, if you are the man in this marriage that is not working, can you deal with it like Christ dealt with it? Do, are you sure that the probation of your wife has closed so that you may now spew her out? Are you sure that it has closed? Because Christ waits until close of probation. Now she says that everything that could have been done for this uh, church have been done and then I cannot do anymore. I'm, I'm going with those who are ready. Also in marriages, when things are not working, are you sure that the probation for this wife has closed? If you are sure, then you can go ahead and do what you want to do. And just to know if the probation of your wife is closed, then you have to be in touch with Jesus Christ. But as long as probation still continues for those who are in marriage, we should try and work out things amicably and be able to uh, seek the Lord in prayer. And so, uh, John chapter 17, verse 12. John 17, verse 12. We are looking at where is the man that can equal to Jesus Christ. So those who are asking, where is the lady? First of all, we said that you should ask yourself, are you the man? If you are the man, then start asking, where is the lady? Because there is no reason for you asking, where is the uh, woman? if you are not the man. The book of John chapter 17, verse 12. This is uh, what um, we, we read out in the Bible. Christ says, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. And so, uh, you are the man in the relationship. You are the man in the marriage. Are you the man, Jesus Christ, who has kept everything that has been given unto you? Or uh, are you there for the benefits rather than people benefiting from you in this relationship and marriage? Christ has not been benefited in anything concerning his uh, mission uh, to take upon uh, 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 bearing the sin of the church and dying for the church. As you enter into the courtship, as you enter into your marriage, uh, as a man, know that, as I said, you are the head. It, it goes beyond just uh, being called the husband. And the, the, the word the husband, we shall be looking at it when we are talking about the, the duties of uh, a, a, a husband in a family. And so when you are the head, we said that you protect that which is under you. And Christ, all that was given in his hands, he never lost even a case. Also, we should understand that the courtship we are in, the marriages we are in as men, we are, we are, uh, we are uh, in the mission field to spiritualize our, uh, our partners as men to show that we are on a higher level when it comes to spiritual things. And uh, I speak about this and uh, I do not boast because this is uh, uh, something that should be happening. I know women can be spiritual and they can read the word of God, but man has been also endowed with uh, a privilege of understanding things better or in somehow a broader way than a woman would understand them. And so, a man always ought to be ahead in his spiritual life so that he may bring the woman to this standard that is higher than uh, what she is aiming at. And uh, if you are this man who has aimed so low in your marriage or in your courtship, you will never bring your wife or your girlfriend to a state where actually she is higher in spirituality. And so, uh, a man should be able to be in a position where she is more spiritual than the woman, which means that uh, she is able to face the difficulties of contending with the enemy, that is the devil, and know the inroads of uh, the devil. So that if there is any attempt 
to destroy the courtship of the marriage, the man is ahead of time when it comes to spiritual things. This is what it means that uh, uh, when Christ says that all that you have given unto me, I have lost none because he was able to lead them step by step in three and a half years to reach a higher spiritual level. When uh, the disciples were still contending about who should be greater and who should be this and that in the kingdom, Christ says that it should not be so. And so he was able to lead them into a higher spiritual experience in that they remain faithful and they will be in the books of life. And when Christ comes, they will be resurrected, those who have died. And so even men in their courtship and in their marriage, we are looking for this man who can be able to bring an experience in the life of the girlfriend or the wife to reach her to a standard that her name can remain in the book of life and she, he can say like Christ, those that you have given to me, I have lost none, here they are. And if you have a man and he is not leading you to this high experience, then uh, uh, be sure that your name may be missing in the book of life. And so you are called even study more so that you may know the inroads of the devil. The book of Romans chapter five, Romans chapter 5 from verse 6. Romans chapter 5, verses 6, going onward. And uh, some points, I'm repeating them so that uh, they may make an impression in our hearts. Romans chapter 5, and... Uh, I'm reading from verses six to verses 11. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. We are looking for that man. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet seen as Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the, his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Now, here is the problem with men. They want everything that has been made for them. Where is this man that can make up the wife that he wants to have? For Christ is working for the church that shall be the bride. But we are asking ourselves, where is the man? Yes, you have prayed and you have been introduced to a lady by providence, by relatives, by the parents. And uh, before I continue with that statement, let, let, let me uh, talk about this point of uh, a man having a wife or finding a good wife. By the way, where do men find their wives? It's too bad that uh, our parents, some of us, our parents are not godly. It is too bad that some of us are <laughs> not having a Seventh day Adventist parents. But if you are a man, I, I believe that uh, the best privilege a man should have ever had is the father to tell you that that lady is whom I have found for you to marry. I know few people will say amen to that. <laughs> few people will say amen. When your dad comes home and uh, you, you have, you know, when you, you start contemplating about marriage, you go to your mother, you say, you know, mother, I have reached a time I want to marry, is it? And you tell your dad, I have reached a time to marry. And in that day, you tell your father, you see, this is an Adventist father, a converted man, like your father is an elder. And he says, Zadok, I have been uh, waiting for such a moment to come. And I have just the perfect woman for you. I tell you, you will think, you will, you will, uh, you will desire you have never told him about that, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do my dad say that I have been waiting for this moment 
and I have already a wife for you. But look at this. You know, God the Father is blotting out names in the book of life and accepting, is it? Yes. And so at the end of the time, he will tell Jesus Christ, here is your wife. And if you don't believe that is the truth, just look at the Genesis creation story. The man is created and then what? He awakes in sleep and he told, this is your wife. Did Adam say no? No, he said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. When you see the woman that your father has been preparing for you, you will say, I'm saved from many temptations because here I have not just selected a lady for myself, but the father has also selected the lady for me. And so I think we have got so attached to new, uh, the new world we are living in that we have uh, 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 gone away from the, the true religion of uh, trusting our parents with some decisions which are so important. Like uh, we talk about selecting a job. Uh, this is something that our parents should be doing, should guide us to select our jobs. And we talk about getting wives. These are the things that our parents should be doing. And so uh, if I had an Adventist father and he told me, and uh, I, I love my mom uh, uh, and I cherish her so much. Uh, my mom, and I have ever told this story and uh, it is interesting and I'll continue talking about it, not to shame my mom or to shame whoever is, was involved. When uh, I was like uh, 24 years, 25 years, uh, my mom used to come home with a lady, uh, a very good lady. She was not a bad lady, but uh, here I, I'm, I'm now a seventh day Adventist and this is a, a So she, she used to come with this lady every now and then. And one day she asked me, son, how, how do you see this lady? And you know, when your mother asked that, there, there, there's a lot she's asking. One day I was uh, still staying in Maseno and then uh, uh, I come back home and my mom is like, uh, uh, I have some uh, tins of groundnuts. Can you take to your friend? Now, she's not saying that I take to my friend. I take to my friend. And so you wonder what is happening with my mother's mind. But uh, what is the bottom line? Mothers and fathers see father what their children see. Why? Because they have passed through the same experience. And so she, she, she wants to know, are you dating somebody? So that you may open up when you receive those things of groundnuts, the next thing, what is her name? Why haven't I seen her? And so when uh, I got my wife, uh, Remy, uh, 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 when, uh, when I, I got up with her and uh, I shared who I was and she shared who uh, she was, and then uh, I made this step of uh, going to, to see her mom and her, uh, her, her relatives. And uh, I went there and told her mom, this is me, Samuel Bafos, and I, I want to marry, I would like to marry your, your, your daughter, but first thing, I want to have a courtship with her so that uh, we may get married, know each other better. And she said, ah, it's okay. Few questions she asked, she didn't have many questions. The question that mothers would have, uh, will you be able to protect this child? Will you be able to uh, 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 honor her and all that stuff? And I said, yeah, uh, I have decided this and then, I took an opportunity of uh, taking her to my mom. They sat there for one week alone. And my mom said, okay, the lady's okay for you to marry. These are the things that you want your parents to approve. Uh, and I was on my point that uh, uh, people want things which are already prepared in Romans chapter five. But are you that man that uh, is able to make this lady be what you want in life? Or do you want already prepared things? If you see a lady that uh, uh, maybe you have desired to marry and uh, she in quotes doesn't have all the qualities, but this is what the Lord has given unto you and you are serious and she is serious because we are people who have flaws. How will you deal with this lady? Are you ready to prepare her so that she may be a woman that you want her to be or you want something that is already prepared? Who will prepare for that, uh, that lady that you want to marry? It is you to be able to prepare this. And if you have a wife that is not already 
what you call a cooked wife. Do everything you can to make her a wife that you want her to be instead of admiring other people's marriage. Can you go and search why is the secret why that wife is that to the husband? And we can mention a few people who have their, their marriages so good, but we won't mention them. But you are seeing some marriages working. Why don't you approach that husband and ask him, how have you made your wife to be what he is? she is? And then do that. They say that women vary uh, their, their attributes and all that. But the principles are still the same in the work in marriages, that if you are a godly man, you can prepare this lady to be uh, what you want to be. Now, this is the quote that uh, we always talk about, or the verse, Proverbs 18.22. Whoever finds our wives, 18.22. And men love to quote this, Proverbs 18.22. But I will, I'll show you something that matches Proverbs 18.22. So let us read Proverbs 8.22 and see what it says. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, amen, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And men quote there and they live there. But you go down in 20 verse 6. 20 verse 6. The same author, Proverbs 26. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Hmm. That matches 18.22, whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing. But who can find a man? Where is this man who is faithful like Jesus Christ was? So men, they go parade themselves before the ladies and say, you know what, lady? I'm the good man. Yeah. They say men proclaim everyone his own goodness. They show everything they can show to a lady and try to prove that they are the good men. But when Christ looks at you and this lady that actually is a good wife, does he see you as the man? Who can find such a man who is faithful? And faithfulness doesn't just mean not being adulterous, not being this and that, meaning that you can go all the way with what the scripture says that you should go. We are in search of a man. And so if you, are, if you are a man and you are searching for a lady, search yourself first. Hmm. Am I the man that Christ is approving for this lady? I have seen good ladies and every man wants to marry a good lady. Many of them, by the way, those people were asking, where is the lady? Please give me a call. As now your father can give you a lady. But I'll ask you if you are the man. I'll try to examine if you are the man because I have examined the lady. I know she is the lady. I have ladies who, who would like to be married and they are so faithful. They, they can make good words according to the principles of the Bible. I don't know uh, about some other issues about what we'll say. How do you know about this? These are the people I have interacted with. But before you make a call, examine yourself if you are the man because you may fall behind being that man and so many people talk about finding a woman but uh, we are looking for a man are you that man that should marry this faithful uh, lady and so you must see yourself for who you are before you start thinking about others and so uh christ came in the world to save the world and uh the men who are taking upon themselves the responsibility of having wives, it is your duty to make sure that you present them before the Lord. First Corinthians chapter four. Yesterday we looked at uh, a woman who can be a person who can economize. First Corinthians chapter four. One Corinthians four. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Talking about this man. <coughs> Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. 
Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So this is the man that Proverbs 20 verse 6 is talking about. A steward who is faithful. Uh, as a man, we talked about the woman in Proverbs chapter 31. This woman seeks a land and buys it, seeks wool, needs for the household not to go in cold, consider it a field and buy this, and does all these things. But remember, behind this man, a woman, there is a man. There's somebody who is driving this man because a woman cannot just come from nowhere and start doing things at your home. Such are things that are written in Proverbs 31. There must be a man, and we are told that the man of this woman is placed in the gates. We are looking at the man. We saw that we have a woman yesterday. Can we have such a man who actually the woman portrays him in the gates of uh, in the gates as a faithful man, a person who is faithful in uh, uh, managing the finances of the house, and he will include the woman in the managing of these funds because uh, the best person to invest in is your woman. By the way, if men never knew about this whether in courtship or in your marriage, the best person to invest in is your woman, not any other business. Because women have tact. If uh, you give a woman 10 shillings, be, be sure that she will save five shillings from me. <laughs> Mama Emily, is that not so? Okay. I'm not praising you people, but uh, I have tried to experience this because I have dealt with my mom. I have dealt with my wife also. And there's so many things I can talk about my wife, but I, I, I will forbear to do that. But uh, uh, in, in two years that I have lived with my wife, I have noticed if I want to save money, I'll not go into business. I have to give to my wife. Then if I demand it, I can get back when it has profit. So I don't, I don't need to do business. I just need to come with that, that thousand shillings. I'll be able to be fed and I'll be able to get a change from it when I want to go for a journey and I don't have money. So you wonder, you gave a thousand, you have been fed for a week and still you are asking for a balance in it. Uh, this is the wisdom that God has given them because if you look at the woman in uh, Proverbs 31, she had this man and this man invested in her and she is able to provide everything, even the land that uh, they consider to buy and do some business. And so uh, I'm advising men who are in courtship and in marriage, the best person to, uh, to invest in is your wife. If you are looking for a wife of Proverbs 31, be a good stewardship to her life, invest in her, then you will not regret you, you have to buy house, uh, you, do, you have to buy land, you have to buy clothes. No, just come with the money and give to her and tell her this is the money we have. And this is the money that should sustain us for the next three months. And you'll see uh, the, the best thing that you have ever seen. And so good stewardship is to invest where actually you can get profit. Is that not so in stewardship? Because look at the parable of the talents. Is it the Lord gave one talent, five talents and 10 talents. And what did the people do with their talents? They reproduced. And so if you want to remain with your talent, if you want to remain without any expansion in your home, do not confide in your wife. Do not uh, make a good stewardship, or you will not be get, making a good stewardship. Good stewardship is to invest where actually you can uh, have production. And uh, the best person to produce is the person you are marrying, the person that you are in, in your marriage. And so let us try to be that man that can invest in the lady of uh, Proverbs 31. Let us not be stingy. Some people are in relationship and in marriages and even their wives don't know their salaries. You know, that is interesting. Your girlfriend doesn't know your salary, your wife, those who are married, your wife doesn't know your salary. Ladies, if you have such a man, he's working, you don't know her salary. You don't know his salary. You are in a marriage, know that you are in trouble and the best thing you can uh, try to realign that if you are in courtship, if you are in marriage, I don't know what to advise you, but it is to continue hoping in the Lord that everything will go right. As we come to an end, <coughs> I 
Ephesians chapter 6, verses 4. We are looking at the last statements now. Ephesians 6, verse 4. We are looking for a man. And so those who are asking for, where is the lady? We are seeking for you people, where is the man? 6, verse 4. We saw how a woman is weak. Because that is what the Bible says in First Peter chapter 3, that they are weak vessels, and we should deal with them as weaker vessels. You, the person who is in courtship and in marriage, do you see your wife as a weaker vessel, as the Bible says? And what is your duty to them? And if fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so just because it has not written provoke not your wife, then it means that uh, you should not provoke your wife. We are saying that those men who are in courtship and who are in marriages, you should not cultivate a habit of provoking the people you are in partnership with you because it just wounds them. It makes them even more vulnerable. It makes them not be able to respond to love in a better way. We shouldn't be always jumping to provoke them. If they do mistake, we magnify them. And uh, <clears throat> I think uh, 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 I'm, I'm a straightforward man. I, I mean, uh, I don't uh, like uh, mincing words while uh, I'm dealing with issues and uh, my wife knows this, but uh, when it comes to understanding the uh, relationship that we are in and the courtship that we are in, there's a way that you can decide to be straight to your wife, which will not be good. Try to think what uh, uh, will uh, be able, when you speak to your wife, uh, make her not feel so guilty about it. And uh, I think uh, in the first months of our marriage, it was so hard because being that straight and uh, trying to provoke her was not working well. And uh, I had to learn uh, how to deal with my wife. Yes, I can be straight but in a way that will be redemptive more than it will actually harm her more. You have to be straight, but you have to be straight in a way that will bring redemption to your family. You don't want to reach in the evening, you cannot do worship together as a family. Just because your wife did something wrong and in your response, you even made it more worse than it should. Remember, there's always a devotion in the evening <laughs> if you are married. You know, this is the problem with marriage. Uh, in courtship, you can uh, quarrel, and you, you are not with this way, uh, woman, is it? She is at her home, and you are at your home. You don't care because you'll have your own devotion in the house. But now here you are in marriage, and you have quarrel. How do you do devotion? In courtship, you can quarrel and walk away. Yeah, sleep at the house. And, and even that is dating. Because if it were good courtship, you will make sure before the sun goes down, this is the woman you are going to marry. Make up things so that when she go to have her devotion, it is good. And when you go at your home to make devotion, yes, brother Zadu. Yeah. So dating, you can walk away from each other, is it? You quarrel and you say, okay, you go and I go, we will meet. If my wife wants to get things straight, if I turn my ear this side, <laughs> she tells me, we can't spend tonight before we get things straight. <laughs> amen, amen. And uh, I remember Pastor Jeremiah Davis, he said that uh, if I quarrel with my wife and she decides to go to, to sleep on the sofa, I said, that is where I will sleep. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to sleep on the bed alone. I'll go where she is, we make peace, we go back to the bed. Because I cannot endure, she, he was saying, I cannot endure my wife sleeping on, she didn't come to sleep on the chair. There were enough chairs at her where she was brought up and they were nice. And so he's saying, no, no way I can quarrel with my wife and she decided to go to sleep on the chair. I have to make sure that that night there's no sleep we spend in reconciliation. So the bottom line is that do not provoke your wives as some, um, uh, or your girlfriends that you are going to marry uh, if you are in courtship. Try that uh, even when the sun sets, they'll be in a mood to do their devotion. We are seeking for a man who is uh, uh, prepared to handle the courtship and marriage in a way that will help their spouses reach a higher experience of uh, their spiritual life. And so 
uh, provoke them not, be gentle unto them because first Peter says that they are weak. And uh, then uh, uh, the book of Colossians 3.21, uh, I think it uh, repeats uh, the same things. Colossians 3.21. Now somebody may say that, hold on, you are setting the standards too high. I tell you friends, in courtship and marriage, the standards has to be so high greater than the, what the children of men can imagine is the ideal that God has for his children. We shouldn't be aiming too low in these issues to do with courtship and marriage. Because if we aim too low, we are just degrading Christianity because family life is a miniature of uh, what is the church and Christ. And so fathers not, not uh, provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. Not, don't let your wife or your girlfriend be discouraged as you go through your courtship. And then uh, uh, if you do this, we are told in First Peter, First Peter chapter 3, and uh, I'll give you a verse. If you continue doing this as a man, what will happen? Uh, verses 7, 3, 7, and I have to project uh, this. If you are a person a man who is always provoking your girlfriend or your wife. First Peter 3 7. What happens? 3 7. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to, no, to knowledge, given, or giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Many men, their prayers are being hindered because they don't honor their wives. They don't honor their girlfriends. They lead them down low path. But if you will lead your wife and your girlfriend to a higher level of spirituality, then God says that uh, you are making her heir of the grace. You are recognizing her as heir together uh, of the grace of life that the Lord has given unto us. And then your prayers will not be hindered. Ask yourself why your prayers are not being answered. It is because the way you are dealing with your girlfriend and the way you are dealing with your wife. And uh, uh, as, uh, uh, in my marriage, in the first times, there, there were these difficulties that we used to have because uh, we had not bonded, uh, uh, come to that uh, place of understanding uh, things in a better way and we, are st we were still learning. But uh, we, we came at a point our prayers were not being answered and uh, we realized that it was the way we were dealing with each other. And uh, we were able to be helped by the grace of God to rectify that. And uh, I'm proud that uh, I have a family. Uh, I have a wife whom I love. And uh, uh, the Lord has opened so many things unto us. And uh, I see our married life progressing every day and every day as we try to tackle it or as we tackle it according to the word of the Lord. We are being led to even a higher spiritual experience like a uh, uh, being able to share openly what uh, we feel for each other and being able to lead each other to a higher spiritual experience. The reason why our prayers were being hindered is because we didn't respect each other uh, that much and we didn't work towards it. But immediately we started working towards it. The Lord has blessed us so much and uh, uh, many people in the village uh, envies us and how we live and the, uh, the way we agree on things. And so, uh, yeah, you, you talked about uh, Zadok, how the Messiah thought what kind of a wife you had who have sat on you, if uh, I do tra direct translation, who is controlling you. And this is what even the, uh, you see, uh, I live in a home where actually it's on the road and the children are passing, going to school. And uh, they could see me washing utensils. And some neighbors could see me and they could ask, why did this man marry? And so it reached my ears. And uh, one day I, uh, I found this lady who was wondering how I deal with my wife and what my wife deals with me. And uh, at last, you know, I don't know if this was out of, uh, uh, of hypocrisy, but I understand that uh, it was not out of hypocrisy. After talking with her for some time and after conversing with her for some time, uh, she told me, I'd like to have such a husband whom we can help each other and do all these things together. If you are the man, then uh, even the, the village will envy you and try out to, uh, 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 to, to emulate you. And uh, 
uh, this woman was not so much spiritual, but uh, I, have, I have been watching her progress in the village and uh, she has started loving the Lord so much. And it is because of just seeing what, how we have been conducting ourselves. And in this, this simple act of uh, trying to help my, my wife to wash utensils and all that, it has become the talk of the town in a better way, not in a, a, a wrong way. And uh, the youths even are appreciating this, that they can be in a relationship where they understand things. Uh, better. And then uh, uh, we are looking for this man and the, we will end with these two texts. Luke chapter 2 verses 52. Luke chapter 2 verses 52. Luke, Luke 2 52 because you are looking for the man. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in, in stature, and in favor with God and man. As a, a man of the courtship and a man of marriage, are you increasing in stature? Are you increasing in wisdom? Every day, you know, every day, as we behold Jesus Christ, we are being changed into his image. You didn't come into marriage a perfect person. In fact, you took a stranger to be your wife because she had lived where she lived for Take an example, you are taking a woman who is 25 years to 27 years. All her 27 years and 24 years, she has not lived with you. You don't know her personality. And the, the, the few months you have been in courtship, don't say that you understand this woman, is it? You cannot come to understand this woman fully. But as you enter into marriage, you start knowing each other, is it? More and you start bonding. And so as you continue in doing this, are you increasing in stature, in measure, in wisdom, in favor with God and man in your relationship? Or as you go into this marriage and in courtship, that is when you are becoming more bad and more bad. And so ladies, you should be looking out for this man who is increasing in stature, in measure, in wisdom, with favor with God and with favor with man. If you are in a relationship and you are seeing your man go downward spiritually, in wisdom, in handling things, know that you are going to face a marriage which is uh, full of turbulence. And if you are in a marriage where things cannot be handled aright, then you should start praying to the Lord that something happens in your marriage. And uh, you may reach in marriage and then uh, uh, your wife becomes somebody that you cannot manage. Remember John 1.12 that uh, Christ came into his own and his own did not receive him. You can come and start staying with, with this uh, woman, you have made vows, and then things are not just working out. What shall you do about it? You should be able to accept what is going on uh, if it is in marriage. If it is in courtship, you should uh, uh, sit again and talk about these things, and if they can't work out, then uh, you should know what to do according to the Bible. But if you are in marriage and things are not working out, as uh, so we say that divorce is not the best thing uh, separation is not the solution, but uh, you should uh, give all your best. You see, sometimes marriages fail to work. This is what I'm saying uh, as, uh, as we pray. Marriages fail to work out because men stop giving their best in marriages. It reaches a time you say, I'm tired. But when you say you are tired in marriage, what are you trying to say? You are tired with Christianity. That is essentially what you are saying. You cannot say you are tired with your marriage. There can be times when you are facing a lot of challenges and a lot of problems because family life is set up to represent the church. There is no way a Christian will ever say that I'm tired of being a Christian because it has many challenges. You want to do and give your best in marriage, whether you are a wife or a man, and then leave the rest with the Lord. And so, uh, I didn't want to go to SOP, but I, I can read this in closing for those who are uh, in marriage. I just read one quote. I, I wanted just to deal everything with the Bible so that uh, we may get these principles from the Bible. You know, Brother Zadok, the problem is that people know a lot of quotes and they, they try to understand them the way they understand them. And so they have a habit of quoting this and a habit of quoting that. You bring out this one and they bring out that one. We have to understand these things uh, from what the Bible say, what is the perspective of uh, the ideal marriage? 
And then after we understand the Bible, then we can understand what E.G. White is saying. And uh, we appreciate that uh, we can lay this foundation so well so that uh, people may know what is wanted of them from the Bible. And then now uh, when they quote E.G. White, in fact, E.G. White says that don't quote me if you don't understand the Bible. And so I wanted to bring out these principles. And so when my brother would be continuing with the quotes and I try to look into the quotes, uh, we shall be able to understand what the Lord is saying. But the last thing we are reading from 2SG, that is uh, 2SG. If you are this in these marriages now that are not working, what can I tell you uh, this day? I read just one thing from uh, Spiritual Gifts, Volume 2. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 2, from page uh, 200 and 266, paragraph, paragraph 1. You are in marriage and it's not working. And divorce is not what the Lord would want it to be. I saw, I'm talking to those in marriages now. I saw that those who profess the truth should hold the standard high and induce others to come up to it. I saw that some will have to walk the straight path alone, 2SG 266.1. I saw that some will have to walk the straight path alone. Their companions and children will not walk the self-denying pathway with them. Patience and forbearance should ever characterize the lives of those lone pilgrims. Following the example of their blessed master, they will have many trials to endure, but they have a hope that makes the soul strong, that bears them up above the trials of earth, that elevates them above scorn, derision, and reproach. Those who possess a hope like this should never indulge in a harsh, unkind spirit. We are looking for a man. This will only injure their own souls and drive their friends further from the truth. Treat them tenderly, Give them no occasion to reproach the cause of Christ, but never yield the truth to please anyone. Be decided, be fixed, be established, be not of doubtful mind. But if your companions and children will not come, if you cannot win them to yield to the claims of truth, make their lives here as pleasant as possible. For all they will ever enjoy will be this poor world, but let not your duty to them interfere with your duty to God. Pursue a straightforward course. Let nothing they may do or say provoke any angry word from you. You have a hope that will yield you consolation amid the disappointments and trials of life. Your companions and children who will not be induced to tread the narrow cross-bearing pathway with you have not this divine consolation. They should have your pity for this world is all the heaven they will ever have. Now, let, you, let me ask you men, if this world is the only heaven that your wife will ever have. How best should you treat them? The very best, because heaven, no one can imagine what the Lord has prepared for us in heaven. And so if this is the heaven that the Lord is saying that they should have, let us make it the best for them. So that at the end of the day, you have a consolation that they do not have. And this is the man that God is seeking to enter into a marriage. And if you are that man, may the Lord bless you. And then now you can start looking for that woman that we were talking about yesterday. Otherwise, God bless you. And uh, let us close with uh, a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are indebted to you for Christ, who did not look at our filthiness, but came to die for us. We are looking for such a man who can make up their families what Christ has made the church to be. And we pray that uh, your strength may be manifest in our lives. Our conduct, our deportment, our speech may be that one that will bring your children to a higher standard. Help us to induce them by the way we live, not by harsh words, not by our unruly behavior, not by lordship over them, but Lord taking care of them as weaker vessels, as lambs and sheep which need guidance. Thank you for thy grace and thank you for being with us in this session. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
May the good Lord bless all of us. In Jesus' name, amen.